John Nelson Leith here, and this particular Thoughts of Leith is not an unboxing, which is a little unusual because I usually have something to unbox. Actually, I unboxed something earlier. I unboxed, not on video, but with myself, some uh, mint chocolate vape juice, which uh, I'm now enjoying. But I just wanted to kind of go through some actual thoughts of Leith. as I get texts. The first thing is, um, as some of you may know, the Two John Sci-Fi podcast that was scheduled for today did not go off because John is out of the area. He, we were not able to go to the regular studio and uh, we bumped into technical difficulties setting up a split screen so that we could do this remotely. And quite frankly, uh, John and I tried for hours from both ends with multiple platforms using multiple sets of software and it just never came off which um, this is the thing I'm not saying that there's not a way to do it and that people that are in the know know how to do it and we just haven't found the way to work work it yet but what I will say is um, Facebook YouTube Skype Google Hangouts, OBS, they're not doing the job right because this should just simply be a point and click affair. At this, it's 2018. Setting up a, a split screen stream should not be something that you have to spend hours troubleshooting. It should be something, it shouldn't be something you have to go on YouTube looking for tutorials for. Um, it should just be uh, innate in the software and it should cross platforms. We had a problem trying to, to, to work laptops and, and phones together. This should, I mean, this is, this is 20th century bullshit, really. And it shouldn't be happening in today. The, the people who are designing these things shouldn't be waiting to uh, have massive complaints before they fix these uh, problems between the different software. There, there, there needs to be a standard. And this needs to be something that's easy to do. I mean, it's a little ridiculous. We'll get it. I have no doubt that, that John and I will figure it out. But uh, we had to, we put the, uh, the podcast on a week-long um, hiatus. We're going to try it again next Sunday after we work out the issues. But it really, really, you know, I know there are people out there that do this all the time. I've seen it done. And I know that the people out there who know how this is done are, are probably thinking to themselves, Oh, it's so simple. It, it's once you get into it, I'm sure it's super simple, and it's just a matter of you know clicking the right icons. But uh, we attempted it, and uh, you know we we tried inviting each other to different streams, and it just um, it just wasn't working. And we we have good equipment um, as far as our you know our our laptops and our phones. I have the, the latest iPhone and it just it wouldn't it wouldn't do it it's a little ridiculous um, it should be one of those things where you don't have to have technical skill to do it anybody should be able to any idiot um, should be able to do it even an idiot as idiotic as I am should be able to do this so I'm a little bit upset about I'm not upset not upset I'm disappointed that people I, I you know when I go to my work I I try to foresee all the possible screw-ups that anybody who doesn't do my work might bump into. I kind of expect that of other people, and, and when it doesn't happen, it bothers me a little bit. So the the, uh, the really unfortunate thing is that I was looking forward to reviewing this fantastic book, Rogue Protocol by Martha Wells. It's the third of four novellas in her uh, Murderbot series. I'm not going to talk about it much here because I'm going to save it for the podcast when it does come out, but I have to say um, I really enjoy. I, I was sad that this one ended. Because I know that there's one more left. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that um, the success, she just won the Hugo, I think, for um, the first one in the series, which is All Systems Red. That's really unbelievably cool because uh, John and I read and reviewed that before it um, won the Hugo. And I think it, I mean, it really deserves it. It, it was amazing. Um, and I... Uh, Hugo, I think it was the Hugo. I may be getting that wrong. But I believe it was the Hugo. 
but uh, it was it was it, the 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 series is a great series. It's a a, a great sci-fi series that has a sort of hard-boiled noir feel to it. Um, the the novels themselves read very much like um, old school hard-boiled uh, detective stories. Um, the way that they progress, and yet it's all in a science fiction setting, and it just it's just really satisfying the way that Martha Wells blends these. And as you know, as I was uh, waiting for the um, the run up to the next uh, the next podcast, because John and I usually soon after the first podcast we decide on what we're going to read for the next one. I I picked up this book, which uh, by Helen Dale called Kingdom of the Wicked. It's a book one of two. The second book is called, this one is called Kingdom of the Wicked Rules. The second book is called Orders. What this is, is basically a speculative history. It's kind of sci-fi. And the concept is, what if, for example, Archimedes did not die in the Battle of Syracuse and he was able to invent calculus and this led to an industrial revolution during the Roman Empire? And so you, what you end up with is a first century Roman Empire um, that has many of the technologies, although in different form, that we have uh, in the, or we have now or we had in the 20th century. There are, for example, just multiple uh, channels on television that you have to click through, similar to the way it was before cable. And you have uh, um, MRAPs and, and automatic weapons and and radio communications, electricity. It's a, a really interesting story so far. I've, I've only gotten about a fifth of the way through, and I, I wanted to give it a kind of a, a test read because it is it is rather thick, and I was afraid that if I got into it too much and then John and I decided on a, on a different book, it might inter interfere with that. But I think I want to pitch this to him for the next time um, because the second, book, I, the second book, I think, just came out, so if we review this one, it's kind of a, a sort of teaser for the second book, uh, but let me get into it a little bit more. I'm really liking it. Basically what this is, is it's a retelling of the trial of uh, Yeshua ben Yusuf, which you, a person that you may know as Jesus, um, as if the Roman Empire had had um, uh, modern technology and was organized in a, a, a fashion similar to the way that we are. And how would all of those events have played out that way? I'm finding it very charming. Um, and not only that, but Helen Dale has really done, she's really, you know, I took some, uh, I mean, my degree is in, in comparative religion. So I've, I, you know, this period in time has a lot of stuff going on religiously. So I studied a lot in college. But before that, in high school, I took two years of Latin. So I'm kind of, a, you know, I know a bit about that period in history and, and, and the Roman Empire. And Helen Dale has really done, she's, she's done her research. If you like alternate histories and you like the Roman Empire, you like um, historical books. And, and the funny thing is this doesn't feel like, it, I think it qualifies as science fiction. And I think that John would think so too. But it doesn't feel like science fiction because the science is simply up to the level where we are. It's just projected into the past. So it kind of feels like just a regular drama. Like almost like a legal drama, a legal political thriller, or a legal drama, so far, um, set with uh, modern um, technology set in the past. I can, and, and the thing is, I, I, I say this all the time, and I say this on the podcast all the time that I would like to see some of the books that we review adapted for television. But as I'm reading this. Um, it, that that's not the feeling I get. It, the, the feeling I get is not that I want it, although I would like to see this adapted for television. The feeling I get is that this feels like something that's ready to be adapted for television. I mean, I can see this getting picked up by HBO. Um, of course, Amazon really has, doesn't have enough out there to, to sort of get a sense of, of the way that they do things, but I can see this on uh, Netflix, more on HBO, but Netflix could pick this up or any any number of, of, of the other networks that do uh, that are you know struggling to get into this uh, sort of speculative fiction television uh, boom that's going on right now. Now, what else have I been working on? Well, as you may know, I've been working on trying to proof my latest novel, which is Zines, and uh, as you can see, 
proof copy, uh, and I haven't got very far through it. I have not gotten very far through it uh, because I bumped myself up into a problem early on that um, this is the way editing goes. You edit and you edit and you edit. And you think you've gotten everything, but at a certain point you're like, nope, I didn't get everything that I wanted to get. Especially if you're kind of a perfectionist, which I'm kind of a perfectionist. So uh, I've bumped into a little bit of a problem. Um, it was far more of a problem than I bumped into when I was uh, editing this one, which is now available on, you can go to Amazon and pick up this one. Uh, but zines is causing me a lot of issues, mainly because uh, it's something that's outside of my normal writing. It's a it's a, a sort of science fiction, and it touches on a lot of uh, really kind of uh, contemporary issues. Um, one of the main characters is an engineered uh, androgyne, which is a, a species that was engineered for space exploration. And they, uh, they were engineered specifically to have, they're both male and female, um, and they were engineered that way so that if, uh, if a colony got beaten down to its bare bones, it could better survive than, you know, if you, got, if you, had a, if you sent out a colony and uh, all the women died or all the men died, well, you're in trouble. But they engineered the androgynes to be the way that they were. Uh, so that they could at least survive a few generations until a supply ship or something else like that came along. Anyway, the androgynes figure really strongly in this. Alternative sexualities figure very strongly in this. A lot of politics, which touches on politics of today. Um, and so it's causing me a little... I just I, I want to make sure that the, um, that the story is getting through and it doesn't just sound like a bit of like propaganda. I want it to be... It's a story first. It touches on contemporary issues, but I, I, I really don't like when fiction gets buried in in, um, in the politics um, because that's not my intention. My intention was not to have some political message that I'm sneaking in through a story. My intention was to just to have contemporary issues so that it what didn't sound dated. But I, the story was the real thing, and the characters were the real thing, and the and the issues that they face. Um, and things like that so uh, I'm being a little bit more cautious with this and it's taking me a while to get through it and uh, but that's one of the things that I'm working on right now in addition to that uh, you know I've been thinking a lot about um, games board games card games and I need to talk to John a little bit more he knows a lot of illustrators he, he uh, has actually communicated with and done business with illustrators and I've actually been thinking about starting a Kickstarter page uh, I have uh, I mean I really have because I'm the kind of person who comes up with a lot of ideas, fleshes them out, and uh, and uh, you know just sort of stores them someplace. And I have over two dozen game ideas that uh, if I had an illustrator, you know, I could nail them down and actually publish them and let people play them. Uh, and I need to start uh, doing that, start communicating with illustrators to try to to try to get these things out there so that they're not just something that I enjoy. You know, thinking about how how they would be played but actually get them out there so that other people can can play them and uh, you know maybe people will like them maybe they won't but it's it's a uh, you know it's a little weird for me to keep creating a lot of stuff like for example this novel um, and not allow other people to to enjoy it um, you know trying to be a little bit more sharing in that way so uh, this has been kind of a weird weekend a lot of weird stuff has happened not just the you know John the, the two Johns podcast not coming off, but uh, just been a lot of a lot of thoughtful stuff happening recently that uh, that uh, I'm kind of working through, and um, I'll try to do some more. I'll try to do more podcasts more often, and uh, and not just uh, wait until I have a package in the mail to do an unboxing. Although I th I like that. I like I think it's fun to do unboxings, um, but I need to I, I you know if I'm really going to do this channel work this YouTube channel this thoughts of leaf thoughts of leaf I don't know why I'm slipping into that weird accent thoughts of leaf I want to do this thoughts of leaf podcast no I don't know I don't know why I keep slipping into that but thoughts of leaf podcast um, I need to do more just regular stuff just talking about the things that I'm up to and things that I'm thinking about um, of course I've got uh, you know my plan is to uh, when when something comes up that's a science 
uh, article that that doesn't really fit into the Two Johns podcast. Um, I want to talk about that too, especially stuff that's more um, psychological and sociological. Uh, get into that a little bit more. So uh, I want to thank you guys for the, those who have subscribed. Um, I thank you for tuning in and uh, and for your the, the likes. I mean, I don't get a lot of likes, but I, you know, I, I do appreciate the likes and I appreciate the shares. Um, if you'd like, check out my uh, my website, which is down here. Uh, I've been posting a lot of songs lately. I'm trying to get a lot of the songs again in the spirit of sharing. I have a lot of songs that I have actually done recordings of and mixed down, and they're just sitting in my in my iTunes, and and nobody else ever hears them. And I thought, you know, you just, you just do a little lyrics video. I just did a lyrics video for a song called "The Ocean Roll." which is one of, uh, I mean, my favorite songs of my own. I mean, that sounds a little narcissistic, but uh, I don't particularly like my music over other people's music. But uh, among my songs, I like The Ocean Roll a lot. I just put that on YouTube, um, and I've, I've done over the past couple of weeks, I've done, I think, 14 lyrics videos for songs. I have hundreds of other songs that I've been doing for decades. I have decades of, of material just lying around that I don't share with people. I need to do that more. I need to be more out in the world and 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 sharing the things that I that I think about and that I create. And I, I want to try to do that more. And this uh, this particular channel, Thoughts of Leith, is one of the ways that I'm be, I've been trying to do that. So thank you for for subscribing, for sharing, for liking, and for going to the website and checking it out. Uh, and I'll try to. I'm trying to up this content, make it a little bit more interesting, make it a little bit more broad in its in its range, and uh, I will be back again with more thoughts of Leith.